Hello everyone. So when we left off last time, we were creating chunks like this, and you can see that they spawn in rather slow, and they don't spawn in very. Uh, they don't. They don't spawn in with any kind of preference. Uh, you get this giant cube of things when you first spawn. I know a lot of people wanted to do like a loading screen where you load those up, um, but it's actually what I need to do is is fix how they spawn in, and similarly, I want to fix how they go away because. A lot of you have started to play around with longer view ranges and walking further distances like this, and you've started to realize that chunks are not free. When you get a lot of chunks in your uh, in your RAM, then they really start to bog you down and you start to go slowly. My computer is a bit of a beast, so um, it can handle quite a few, but there is an upper limit to how well Unity can handle objects. And this is actually why you can't just spawn in cubes for every. Um, uh, you can't just spawn in cubes for every for every voxel that you need. You have to spawn in chunks because there's a maximum limit to the number of objects that Unity can handle. Uh, it, it it only works so well. But the reason that uh, that I'm walking over like this right now in front of you is because I wanted to show you how it happens. You can see that we've got this giant map. What we're going to do in this episode is we're going to make it so that a we only spawn in circles and b we despawn as we wander along. Uh, and this should help a lot of you for optimization. So here in the world script, we have this thing where we actually look for what chunks we want. Um, we go through and we look in this square around our camera to figure out whether or not a chunk is uh, uh, in, whether or not we need to have a chunk in a given area. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this a circle rather than a square. And there are actually a lot of ways to do that, um, but the easiest way from our perspective is just to shave it. And the way we do that is we say if pause, uh, we just say vector3 delta equals pause minus transform.position, and then we say delta.y equals zero, and we say if Delta dot magnitude is greater than or equal to view range. Uh, how about just greater than view range? Then continue, and that will spawn in a circle. And you can already see that we've got a circle rather than a square. That's only a little bit of optimization, but you'll notice pretty quickly that that actually really is a massive optimization, because you no longer spawn in these giant lines. You instead spawn in much more manageable small arcs. Um, the other thing we need to do is despawn behind us. So to do that, we're going to go through all of the chunks that we have and uh, despawn any of them that fall outside of our view range. So A is less than, this is where we store all of our chunk in chunks.chunks. So all of the chunks sign up when they're created. They sign up for that particular list. And we're just going to go through them and delete them. So. And we say vector three delta equals pause minus transform dot position delta dot y equals zero, and if delta dot magnitude is less than view range, then continue. So if it's within our view range, we're fine. But we actually want to have a little bit of wash here. We don't want it to continually despawn and spawn in chunks just because the player is walking back and forth like one meter. So we're going to go ahead and add in some chunk width. Let's give ourselves three chunks worth of um, slosh, and you can customize that if you'd prefer. That'll make it so that it's pretty clear that if the player is wandering away, then then we'll get rid of the chunk. But if he's just kind of a little bit gone, and it might come back, we'll leave it in our RAM so that we don't have to recreate it. Uh, this uh, The next step is, of course, to destroy the chunk. Now here is the first of the gotchas. I think a lot of you did this, and I think that might be my fault, because I think that might be what I told you to do. Of course, what you actually need to do is that. If you just destroy the chunk, then the actual game object and the mesh and the collision mesh all remain behind. So obviously that's no good. The other thing we need to think about is we've got this chunk.chunks.count here. We've got this list of chunks. Now if we destroy a chunk, it won't actually remove it from the list. It'll leave a null spot in the list. Now, if you wanted to, we could remove it from the list here, but there's a better way to do that. Let's go over to into, into chunk, and we're going to add in void on destroy. Now, this is a function that gets called whenever 
the object is destroyed. And therefore, uh, we can just assume that we're going to catch any destructive event, and we can do what we need to do. And in this case, what we need to do is say chunks.remove this. Now, the thing to remember about this is that on destroy only happens when the object is destroyed. When you say destroy, that doesn't immediately destroy the object. It queues it up. So it's going to be destroyed between frames. Therefore, we don't have to do this A minus minus thing that you might have done in the past. We don't have to do that because destroy doesn't actually get called. Uh, it doesn't actually fulfill its destructive purpose until after the frame is done. So we just basically mark them for destruction. And that's fine. We don't need to, we don't need to say A minus minus because nothing is being deleted from the list yet. All right, so this is the sphere of influence we've got. Let's go ahead and walk this way. Let's go a sufficient distance, at least three chunks. Significantly more than that, because I want to make it clear that, way, that they have been vanishing. Uh, by the way, you can put in debug logs about chunks being destroyed if you'd like. Um, I didn't, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad idea. I just, I just didn't do it. Um, it might be nice to know that chunks are being destroyed, I suppose. All right, I think that's far enough to prove the point. So as you can see, we've got a nice circular area. Now, uh, we have a little bit of uh, wash, uh, three tiles worth of wash to our Lee that is behind us, and that's as expected. So it's not a perfect circle, because a little bit of it remains uh, visible behind us. Now, this works regardless of your view range, but you may have noticed that if you have a very large view range, you have a significant slowdown as you spawn in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chunks. I'm not going to deal with that today, but I want you to know that this game I'm making revolves around people moving very fast, so I am going to be implementing a very, very fast chunk spawn-in system. And, uh, and that will be very useful because by that point what we'll do is we'll go through and we'll create all of the chunks at a low level of detail what, at first pass, the instant they are required, and then we'll refine that as the player gets closer. And basically, we'll have several different view ranges, and we'll level of detail it. All right, well, that's it for today. And uh, next time, maybe I'll try and fix up the mech so that the uh, so it's a little bit more fun to wander around with.